In the previous video, we approximated the first order derivative. In this video, we're going to approximate the second order, third order, I mean, basically any higher order derivative. How can we do this? Well, basically, all we, did, we need to do is to iterate what we did in the previous video. For instance, f is a four times differentiable, and I want to compute the second derivative at x. Well, the first thing I can do is say, let's apply the second order um, uh, difference quotient. I could do forward or backward. I'm just uh, doing central here. And I will just write that f second of x is f prime of x plus h over 2 minus f prime of x minus h over 2 divided by h plus a big O of h squared because I know that this is a second order approximation. Okay? Now, what I can do is to approximate f prime of x plus h over 2 and f prime of x minus h over 2 by, for instance, say, a uh, central difference quotient. So let's do that. Uh, I'm replacing uh, each one uh, of these two functions, f prime of x plus h over 2 and f prime of x minus h over 2 by their approximation using a, uh, um, a, a central difference quotient. So this is what I get. Uh, and uh, at this point, what, what I need to do is simply just, well, put everything together, uh, just make the computation. Obviously, there are a few uh, simplifications that uh, can, can be done here. So let's just uh, put everything together. And what we obtain is this. And after we have simplified, we obtain f of x plus h minus 2f of x plus f of x minus h divided by h square plus a big O of h plus a big O of h square. Obviously, uh, big O of h plus big O of h square, I have to go with, the, with big O of h, unfortunately, I would say. And here is the, uh, well, here's the approximation, basically. Here is the approximation of my second derivative. Actually, we could do better than o of the big O of h. That's why, actually, I asked for four times differentiable, because uh, we can do slightly better. Let me actually show you. If, if you do the, 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 the tail expansion of f of x plus h and f of x minus h, here's what you get. And what you want to do is to compute f of x plus h plus f of x minus h. And the reason why you do this is because, I mean, what happens when you do this is that obviously when you, when you add this up, while well, you have two f of x, the, the terms uh, of the first order derivatives will cancel. Uh, then you have the second order and the third order will cancel. And so here's what you obtain. Now, when you write this, look at what happens. Uh, you, you, you basically have the second derivative on the right-hand side, right? You have an h square half second of x. So if you really, um, you know, write things this way uh, and, and divide by h square, here's what you obtain. Oh, let me actually write things this way. You have this difference between, uh, well, what, what looks like what we found earlier, which is the approximation using the, you know, I mean, the, the, the values of x on the grid, uh, and the second derivative, that is actually of order two. So what we have is that the second order central difference quotient, this is the way we're gonna call this, uh, this approximation here, will approximate the second derivative, and the method is of order two. And we talked about stencils in the previous video. Here is the stencil that uh, corresponds to this uh, second order central difference quotient. Now we could generalize this and we could do the nth order central difference quotient. Uh, here it is. Uh, well, and at this point, what I suggest you do is you stop the video and you basically try to, uh, to derive this, this, this value. And so that, that, that way you can, can actually practice and make sure you understand properly uh, what we're doing. And this method is of order two. This, of course, requires some appropriate uh, um, uh, regularity on f so we can have the uh, Taylor expansions at the order we need them. Now, you might have noticed that uh, if n is odd, then obviously n over 2 is not an integer. Therefore, uh, the, 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 the point, I mean, x plus n divided by 2 minus i multiplied by h, I mean, that, that, that's not going to fall on one point of the grid. So we need, we'll need to do what we did before 
uh, which is to approximate this value by taking the average between the point which is before and the point which is after. As a matter of fact, when n is equal to 1, it, it's basically what, what, what we had for the first order central different quotient uh, to approximate the first derivative. Of course, you also need to be uh, computing this, uh, this central difference quotient uh, at a point where you, you can actually compute the values um, for, for the point that are after and before. In other words, if you're really close to the edge, close to the boundary, then you may not have enough points uh, before or after to make these computations. Uh, you can do the same thing for the nth order forward difference quotient and backward difference quotient. So here are the formulas. Uh, and again, x, uh, which is xj, needs to be chosen so you can define all of these elements. So if you're too close to the border, then this might be a problem. So here is for approximating the, uh, well, any, any order derivative that you may have in your equation, you can basically approximate it using point of the grid. And that again is what we're going to use in the next video to approximate the solution to a partial differential equation or ordinary differential equation since we're in dimension one.